So for this video, we're in part two, looking at special tests and provocation signs for not only subperomial impingement, but also rotator cuff pathology. For these four tests that we're gonna look at now, these are more specific to compromisation of the rotator cuff. Uh, whereas in part one, we were looking at more impingement tests. So let's go ahead and get started. The first two that we'll look at are what are known as EARLs, and they stand for IRLS, which is the internal rotation lag sign, and ERLS, which is the external rotation lag sign. For internal rotation lag sign, we're gonna have our patient turn around. They're going to adopt a hand behind back in the small of their back position. This is the start. From here, we're gonna ask them to lift their hand off of their back. If they can do it, the test is considered negative. If they cannot do it, the test would be considered positive. Go ahead and relax. It really is that simple. For the next test, we're gonna look at external rotation lag sign. We need to have our patient turn around. And from here, we're going to bring them into about a 20 degrees of scaption position, which is not a lot. We're gonna flex the elbow to 90 degrees, and we're gonna maximally externally rotate them. Once we get them in this position, we're gonna ask them to hold that and not let the arm move. This would be considered a negative because they are able to hold it. A positive would be that you'll see the arm lag forward as such. Now, there's some debate over does the external rotation lag sign bias the supraspinatus and infraspinatus, or does it bias infraspinatus and teres minor? The real answer is probably yes. Uh, but to what extent, we're not sure. The idea being that if we're at 20 degrees of scaption, we're still biasing more supraspinatus than deltoid, and by bringing the arm into full external rotation, more infraspinatus. Do we see pathology of the teres minor? Yes. Is it the prime uh, external rotator of the monohumeral joint? No. And so when you think of external rotation lag sign, 20 degrees scaption, full external rotation, you're gonna be biasing towards supraspinatus and infraspinatus, but recognize that there is some debate uh, still with that. The next two that we're going to look at um, are also for the rotator cuff. And with the uh, first one that we'll look at, it's called horn blowers. And for this, now, a little bit of education goes a long way with your patient so that they understand kind of the position that they're going to adopt. So imagine for a second that you have a bugle or a horn and you're going to play it, right? If you've been in band or marching band, something like that, you understand that both hands are up towards your mouth. Now, because we're biasing this towards the uh, rotator cuff, specifically external rotation, the next step is we want them to bring their hands to their mouth, but then bring their elbows together. Right? A positive test would be they are unable to bring the hands to the mouth without abducting their arm to get there, meaning they're unable to get in that externally rotated position, thereby implying compromisation of the rotator cuff on that side. So with this, we're going to have our patient bring hands to mouth. You can also say you're eating like a sub sandwich or something like that, or a big burger, right? Uh, just to kind of give them that visual. And then we're going to ask them to bring their elbows together. Now, if they can get into this position without abducting, that's again considered a negative. If we saw this arm kind of go out to the side or stay out to the side, they weren't able to come in, then we would consider that to be a positive. And interestingly enough, the sensitivity of this test is quite good. It's 1.0, right? So that's almost a perfect test, okay? Uh, finally, the last and fourth test that we'll talk about is the drop arm test. Now the drop arm test is with the patient in a standing position, we're gonna passively move them into position here, that being 90 degrees of scaption. And then what we're going to ask them to do is to slowly lower the arm back down. If they're unable to do it slowly, meaning it just kind of goes back down, that would be considered a positive. So. We're gonna assume 90 degrees of scaption, and then we're gonna say lower it over an eight count. So it's gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. 
So that is a negative. A positive would be that it goes down very quickly or they're unable to hold at all. Your sensitivity, not great on this, but specificity is quite good at greater than 0.8. So you have four special tests, uh, biasing towards the rotator cuff. Have a go with these with a peer or colleague, and let me know if there's any questions.